Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first Asia CEO Forum online. With that, can we bow our heads for the opening prayer? Lord, thank you for bringing us together on the first Asia CEO Forum online to continue share and to continue to learn and share ideas, especially this time because of this pandemic happening in the world. Bless the speakers, Lord, for coming in and sharing not only their knowledge, but their skills, how they protect their people, their organization, and our nation. Lord, thank you that you continues bringing, uh, continuously bringing us together to become more stronger and united as a strong nation. With that, may I request everyone to say a silent prayer regarding this pandemic virus that's happening in the world. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. Now, it's our Philippine National Anthem. to everyone we're so pleased to sort of see everyone but I know we've missed we used to have our people with us from across the country on a regular basis and it was always so nice so it's been really hard to be apart and to, to be cloistered like we all have been the past little while but it's a special time a special and difficult time I mean never I thought in my life I would experience such a global pandemic like what we are going through before. Uh, it seems to be a once in a hundred year uh, situation that we have a crisis like this and it's so interesting. So it's, it's a crisis, so we have to be careful. So we're really glad to have everybody and we can talk about what we're gonna do. So uh, some people are worried about the future. We wanna make people feel good that the future is gonna be okay. But there's things that we can do now to make things happen. So I'll just welcome, I'll just point out our, our uh, speakers. We're just so lucky to have some really nice people involved. So first of all, I'll welcome Eric Kaufman. He is the, there he is, Senior Vice President of, of the Asia Pacific Region for IBEX Global, a very major employer here, of course. Next, we have Jovi Hernandez, the Senior Vice President of PLDT and Smart Enterprise, and he's keeping our very important telco connections, our only connection to the world these days, working. So we're pleased to have him with us. Next, we have David Elmerall. David is considered 
one of the nations or maybe even the nation's most important tech leaders. And he's going to have some really interesting things to share about uh, Stay Safe, his world leading um, COVID protection tool, Mobile 2. And lastly, General Guillermo Aliazar is here with us, looking very immaculate, I got to say. Just a short uh, background, but we all, yesterday when we had the dry one run, we were just in, in more casual clothes. But because of him looking so mad, we all put on jackets. So I hope everybody is happy with that. But he is overseeing 77,000 people across the country, many of them armed, as the commander of the Joint Task Force COVID Shield. So we'll get going. Our first speaker, Eric Kaufman. Eric Kaufman has been a big promoter and lover of all things Filipino for the past many years and ran a large operation, his company here, Ibex Global, and made quite a name for himself because of success. He's received a big promotion, so now running the Asia region, but still based here. He's also board member of the Call Center Association of the Philippines representing 80% of the nation's industry, employing more than a, a million people. He's also a guy that most people say gives the most hugs in the Philippines. So let's have Eric tell you all about his story. Please welcome Eric Kaufman. Richard, thank you. I appreciate the, the introduction and uh, so glad to be here. Uh, you know, let, let me first start off by saying that uh, I'd be remiss and not thanking our frontliners uh, across the Philippines. Uh, those serving in the medical profession, trying to ensure the health and, uh, and well-being of, of our citizens everywhere, putting their, their lives at risk, uh, oftentimes um, amazing. And of course, our government officials, many of those uh, working under the general, who you'll hear from uh, shortly, uh, doing uh, amazing things and working tirelessly to, to protect us and keep us safe. And in the BPO world and, and in other industries who are deemed essential, uh, those frontliners who, who are putting themselves forward and doing, the, doing what they can to ensure that we have an economy to come back to so that all of us have work to, 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 to do and prosper from when this thing is eventually over. So to all of you, maraming maraming salamat po. Um, I, I want to kind of call back to the first few days of the ECQ and and kind of think a little bit about some of the many heroics that occurred in those early days. We saw within the BPO industry in particular, hundreds of thousands of people turning overnight into work at home agents and employees uh, with remarkable uh, effect. Uh, and essentially now what we're seeing is the, the, the new normal uh, is something that's going to continue to redefine itself over time. And uh, I, I just cannot help but, but be very proud of how industry and associations work well together in that period despite the enormity and severity of the crisis that we're all enduring across the globe. The, the one thing, Richard, uh, and we talked about this offline, uh, the, the, the learnings that I think many companies have have had as a result of this are numerous. One of the things I wanted to call out is the importance of relationship and network. You know, when, when we first started, certainly we found that when companies who had good relationships with their LGUs, with their telcos, with their um, uh, industry associations, whether they, that be AmCham or Australia, New Zealand Chamber of Commerce and many others, um, or, or the, I mean, especially the local LGUs, uh, they, they had more success because they had that network to lean into, to work with and, and to prosper through very difficult times. And, and I think that's something that a, a lot of us can kind of reflect back on how we can improve ourselves, our industry as we move forward, is to take advantage of, of those networks that are out there and really appreciate them and understand the value that they bring to the table in times especially like this. Uh, we certainly as an industry are very reliant upon our providers, uh, Telco again, thank you, uh, Ovi and uh, many others who, who came to the rescue, uh, our canteen providers, security, facilities, 
people keeping their sites and homes uh, safe and disinfected. Uh, this is this is all critical to ensuring the health, well-being, and safety of our employees and families uh, across the nation and across uh, our industries. And, and the last thing I really want to comment on, Richard, is this is a challenging time for so many people, for all of us in one way or the other. Um, and there are many who, who are suffering because of the, the lack of funds and what have you, and many who are suffering because they don't understand what's going to happen next. Well, you know, I, I, I have learned that the Filipino culture, mindset, and heart is like no, no other that I've experienced in all of the countries I've, I've visited. And I know we will eventually prosper. I know we will eventually come through this. From chaos comes opportunity. And I think that we are in a great position to take and turn this around at the end of the day and show the world how we can do this right and how we can continue to be a very effective leader in our communities and industry. Uh, so Richard, again, on behalf of uh, all of us, uh, just want to say thank you to you and Rebecca for pulling us together for this very important forum and uh, look forward to hearing from the other panelists. Uh, so thank you. Maram Salama. Okay, thank you very much, Eric. Yeah, please keep up the good work. We want you guys to be back uh, growing and hiring uh, uh, people in, in short order. So I hope uh, that's the case. Okay, the thumbs up is there. Okay, our next speaker, I'm so pleased to have him, Jovi Hernandez, the, uh, I, I would say, high-flying uh, senior vice president of PLDT and Smart Enterprise, the business groups. And you know, I, I keep saying many people think that our internet and phone connections keep running kind of by magic. You know, maybe there's fairies that keep it working. So, but I can tell you there's a lot of people involved. So Jovi has multitudes of people at locations across the country working as what I call virtual prisoners. <laughs> He's got them, you know, to keep these things live, working in not the best circumstances but sacrificing. So, and I'm, I, I gotta say, I'm impressed personally at how well it has all worked. It's probably the only thing the media hasn't been screaming about is our telco connection. So I wanna say a, a, a hands up to uh, you and your people, Jovi. So let's, I won't go on. Let's have Jovi tell his story. Please welcome Jovi Hernandez of PLDT Enterprise. Thank you so much, Richard, and a uh, pleasant good afternoon, everybody. You know, the PLDT Group's efforts to be one with the nation and contribute to the welfare of uh, both our consumers and our enterprises, I think has been quite documented in social media and in the press. We have provided connectivity and hotlines to critical government agencies such as DOH, DOTR. We have medical centers and hospitals like RITM and the PGH. Uh, we've been working with LGUs. In fact, uh, I remember one of our uh, crew sent a picture where, wherein they were having coffee with uh, Mayor Isco Moreno of Manila at one o'clock in the morning after doing some work in Manila. And we've also worked with Cebu nationwide. I mean, it's, there's free Wi-Fi in quarantine areas and uh, COVID, ho uh, COVID uh, hospitals. We've been working very hard to provide free access to COVID-19 tracking websites, uh, payment extensions, uh, in fact, uh, I think it was yesterday where we've announced that all of the bills for PLDT in terms of the homes will now have a six-month credit arrangement. Everything and everything that we can do to make things a little bit easier uh, for the nation we're trying to do. Uh, but I, what I wanted to share with you this afternoon is how this whole Bayanihan spirit has manifested on the ground uh, and behind the scenes to make sure that everyone in the, in the country can continue to keep in touch with each other and essential businesses can continue to operate. You're very correct, Richard. Uh, I think this is the first time I'm having multiple online meetings every single day. And I think it's more tiring now because at least in the office, there's a break for you to transfer offices here here at home. I mean, it's online meetings upon online meetings. So, so it's, it's a really challenging time as well. Um, but times like these uh, bring us back to the basics, um, wherein we deliver our services, especially for those who are battling this pandemic, uh, in the front line and keeping the uh, economic machinery online and available. Our focus, which has been my own personal um, driver, 
is that we have seemed to focus our business metrics and revenues, our focus on business metrics and revenues has shifted very drastically to service. Servisyo muna para sa kababayan at sa, ma- at sa bansa. Um, and we've always taken on a relationship approach with our customers, uh, something that Eric has mentioned. Um, it's not about just making a sale. Uh, we want to make a positive impact on every single business and on their operations, especially now. Uh, Eric was correct. I remember the BPO when the ECQ started. It was it was crazy. Uh, the first two weeks uh, it was like a a uh, it was like a war zone when everybody had to enable work from home for a lot of their employees. And and from our perspective. We've never had that experience in the past. We've uh, we've been able to manage to we've, we've managed to deliver tens of thousands of uh, uh, work from home connectivity devices in just two weeks, and that has been uh, unprecedented. And uh, the last month has been very difficult for all businesses, to say the, le- the least. No exception. Uh, but personally, I continue to find the strength and be inspired by my own colleagues at LDT. Um, each and every single employee has really espoused the call to be one with the nation by embracing their roles, not just in the organization, but the role they play in contributing to nation building at large. Uh, Richard, you talked about our lockdown employees. Our employees in uh, various telecommunications facilities and data center facilities nationwide were also on lockdown uh, when the ECQ was declared. These are the people who attend to calls, who uh, to keep our networks running, who ensure that our data centers are up 24 by 7. It was a very difficult and painful decision agreed amongst the teams, and I was inspired by the way our employees themselves responded uh, with the commitment and dedication that they have shown so far. Being locked down meant being away from their families amid the uncertainty and with no clear timeline in sight. In fact, I remember very clearly at this very moment, we have one employee who's actually servicing a customer. He's like, she's like a, a frontliner for the medical field. And she said during an online call, she felt very bad in a way uh, because instead of her being a first responder for being in the medical field to her own family, she's actually away from the family and serving other people first uh, but she realized that it was needed uh, for the whole country and that was her her um, contribution in terms of the Bayanihan spirit um, we ensured the safety by implementing strict sanitation processes as well as stringent rules on the movements within these facilities so it was really uh, while we have our own BCP uh, processes uh, it was very important um, and I remember Eric saying the resilience of the Filipino uh, it was. It's quite an interesting time. They have online Zumba classes. They have Netflix nights. We provided them PS4 and Xbox. Some of them play Mobile Legends while on lockdown, which shows you really the resilience of the Filipinos that despite the crisis, uh, we remain positive. Now, I, I'd just like to, to end. I'd just like to echo what Eric uh, mentioned. Um, most of us know that the Chinese symbol for crisis has both danger and opportunity elements. And even the most seasoned experts are debating whether the recovery from this pandemic will either be V-shaped, U-shaped, or L-shaped. Uh, whatever shape or form uh, this recovery will take, we see this as an opportunity, but on a different kind of opportunity. There is an opportunity uh, that is not just about progressing our business, but more importantly, about deepening our relationships. The, our chairman and CEO, Manuel Pangalinan, often says that technology is an equalizer of opportunities. And this belief is something that we have all taken to heart. At the end of the day, technology must be inclusive and improve the quality of life for each and every Filipino. So to all of our Kababayans, I mean, nothing is perfect. Quite frankly, even us, we're also adjusting. Uh, what we can say if, uh, if there's anything wrong with the connections that you have, I'm online. You, I'm sure my number is out there. Just call me. All of us have learned to be 24 by 7 and we'll be ready to help. Uh, so thank you very much, and uh, good afternoon to all. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Jovi. That's a fantastic story, so we'll look forward to hearing. Keep going. I didn't know about this 10,000 devices to the BPO industry because I know they were frantic on, on what to do. So 
So great work, I, I uh, commend everyone. Okay, our next speaker, we have the uh, young and energetic David Elmerall, the CEO of Multisys Technologies and one of the nation's premier tech leaders, so we're glad to have him. I know he hasn't been sleeping much, him and his people. They've been cloistered in there, kind of a, they have kind of a campus, um, campus head office with all of their, their tech staff and so forth. But his company has quickly developed the nation's COVID reporting tool that's uh, apparently well regarded and, and among the, the world's uh, uh, leading uh, mobile apps. So pleased to talk about all of that. Please welcome David Elmerall, Multisys Technology. Hi, David. Hi, Richard. Uh, ah, can you imagine that uh, we are in a total lockdown now? <laughs> So uh, thank you again for uh, uh, joining force with us. Uh, when we uh, encountered the the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, the first thing come came in our mind is how could we help? You know, so uh, we we gathered uh, some programmers just to make sure that we could do something. You know, so we developed the StaySafe.ph. The intention of the uh, Stayship.ph is actually a, a digital bayanihan platform that uh, mobilizes people to report their health status, whether they're in good condition or experiencing mild symptoms or have a severe condition without revealing their identities, because we're quite concerned also on the data privacy. Actually, the, the reports are visible to the admin. We're able to uh, sign agreement with the National Task Force on COVID-19. So we presented to them the, the solution and uh, and, uh, you know, after the seven sleepless nights of our developers, uh, we tapped uh, 12 uh, full stack developers to to uh, to develop the, the platform. Uh, luckily, we have the health box platform that we developed last year. So basically, this platform is uh, not for COVID-19. It's actually for a certain uh, like uh, epidemic monitoring system for like malaria, like uh, um, uh, dengue, uh, like uh, tuberculosis, polio. So it's not actually for COVID-19. So uh, we're able to revise or modify the the platform, and we come up with an idea to to uh, to develop the StaySafe.ph. Uh, you know why we uh, we call the platform Stay Safe because every time that I talk to someone, they always tell me Stay Safe. So <laughs> even in emails, they always uh, mention the word Stay Safe, Keep Safe, Stay Healthy, Stay at Home. So Top of my head, I think uh, we can revise the health box platform and convert that into a stay safe platform since uh, everyone is uh, really like uh, showing concern to everyone, uh, mentioning the word stay safe. On top of that, um, stay safe has a contact tracing system that, that we develop uh, where the suspected or the probable or the confirmed cases, confirmed uh, COVID-19 cases can be tracked, can be traced by the government, uh, even without disclosing the identity. The most important feature of the stay safe is not the identity, but the uh, condition that you're reporting in the platform. So it doesn't matter who you are. So what matters is uh, in that location, are people getting sick? Are those people are experiencing some symptoms of the COVID-19? So so that we can have the, a nice heat mapping so that the government will be able to, to, to monitor. So right after our signing with uh, with uh, the NTF COVID-19, so we're able to work with the DILG uh, so that we, uh, just to distribute this uh, uh, access to the LGU level so that they'll, they'll, they'll be able to monitor the LGU level. Uh, this will help break the chain of the COVID-19 transmission. That is the main goal. So we studied a lot of uh, systems uh, like, like Singapore, they have their own uh, uh, trace together. Uh, Taiwan, they also have one. Uh, South Korea, they also have one. So we combine this technology all together and we revise our health box platform and we come up with the uh, uh, stay safe platform. So after, you know, after the, the launching, it was really like us. Uh, even we're so tired uh, without <laughs> sleeping for like seven days and my guys are like rejoicing you know like uh, we've done something for the country and then we promoted and then our guys are telling us that hey uh, you accidentally develop a digital bayanihan platform you know so because the, the government cannot do this alone it should be all of us should join force you know 
because the COVID-19 crisis is no longer just a problem of the government. It is already a problem of everyone. So everyone should join force together, you know, use the state platform, you know, report your conditions so that the government will be able to identify the locations, the uh, the areas the uh, where this uh, COVID-19 are like uh, worsening or maybe uh, spreading, you know. So uh, the LGUs and the national government uh, will decide on actions to be taken. Uh, whether uh, these things are at ease or, you know, uh, escalate in a, a certain community. Uh, this is, uh, since uh, this is our model ever since that we really love to, to help our partners. So we open also uh, stay safe to uh, the private uh, company, to the big conglomerates. In fact, uh, PLDT, uh, Smart, they back us up. Uh, Jovi, uh, when I called Jovi, Jovi, I need your help. So uh, for only 24 hours, they're able to whitelist uh, staysafe.ph. So all uh, subscriber of smart, even without internet connectivity or without even uh, uh, like load, as long as they have a, a data um, mobile uh, uh, packet, they can they can use the the websites. So uh, you know, for me, yes, I'm not saying that it's a good thing to have the COVID-19, but uh, as a businessman and as a Filipino, I think uh, we are. This pandemic is opening our eyes that, uh, you know, collaboration, you know, like helping each other. So that Bayanian spirit is now really very strong in the Philippines. That extensive, you know, uh, extensive, uh, like taking taking good care of each of us, uh, not only inside the family, even inside the community, now in the LGU level, now in the national level. So, you know, we talked. Uh, 12 of our full stack developers, uh, we did the marathon uh, for seven sleepless days. <laughs> so to understand the, uh, the, the dynamics of the crisis so that we will be able to create this with a trace and response system, design the system flows, you know, simplify the data requirement that comply also with the data privacy because we don't want to violate the law. So uh, we, I even called the, uh, the NPC guidance and they guided us so we don't capture the information like the birth date, like the names, the address, we don't capture that. So you can uh, use Stay Safe by just uh, registering your mobile number and that's it. So you will be able to report your your uh, your uh, health condition. You know, So we even configured the user interface in a straightforward and uh, easy to use. We even designed the back-end reports and analytics. So we're quite lucky to uh, to be topped by uh, by uh, NTF and uh, the IA uh, uh, the AITF also uh, featured us last night. So you know our our guys are quite rejoicing and uh, I've been thinking like uh, guys we've done something. You know you know the name of our group when we develop Stay Safe we call it the Infinity Wars. So I created a group and then I put all the the best programmers that we have. We top twelve of them. So uh, last April 8th, we were able to make uh, the, the website uh, live. In fact, this week, we're launching the mobile app. Uh, we have the iOS and Android. You know, the, a website can be easily accessed by users uh, regardless of uh, their mobile uh, phone's operating system. So, uh, all right. So uh, actually, um, I, I can show you some of the features uh, of, of, of the Stay Safe. So actually, a stay safe feature is so very quick and easy uh, registration. Uh, second, it has a health condition reporting system. Uh, third, uh, it has a COVID uh, contact tracing system. This is very important, you know, the contact tracing system. It has also the uh, heat mapping system to help the government identify the locations uh, are being like affected so that they will be able to target. It, it comes with an artificial intelligence also. We also embed our multibot so that uh, you can use also the uh, artificial intelligence to get health tips and reminders. It comes with a social distancing notification. This is very important. You know, uh, Stay Safe promotes not only uh, Filipino bayanihan, but it promotes also the uh, uh, Filipino discipline. You know, I think we could bring that that back up, and uh, the, the the government and and individuals now are really helping each other to uh, to bring that attribute out now. Okay, so frontline nurse monitoring responses. We also have that. It comes also with the company and LG response system. Uh, it comes with centralized admin. And it comes with the worldwide system implementation as well. So uh, you know, it's quite uh, an amazing uh, uh, seven days after we launched the system. So if you check uh, my background, so you can see now the heat mapping. So we already have uh, 57,000 subscribers for only for only five days. Really amazing. 
and uh, the bloggers, the individuals, they're sharing our post. So if you can see the, the heat mapping all over the country now, and, and uh, it's quite amazing because it's being used now, not only in Metro Manila, but this is being used uh, in entire country now. So, so you can see the green dots. The green dots are the, uh, in, in good condition. The, uh, the, the orange dots are uh, the mild uh, condition. The, uh, the red dots are the one who declared their, their severe uh, uh, condition. So we're able also to link this with the heat mapping and in, even in the contact tracing. So uh, we presented this to the uh, National Task Force in, uh, in, in COVID-19, and this is how it works, you know. So that's why we need to stay home. We need to cooperate. We need to follow the instruction of the government because the virus is really easily be transmitted. So that's why uh, the government uh, did the lockdown because it's easy to transmit, you know. So we even created a simulator so that you can see when a certain individual will go to a certain... Uh, so it can easily affect, you know, a certain individual. So if this individual will go again to another uh, individual, so so the transmission is, is is quite scary, you know, because uh, it's a virus, you know. It can be in air. It can be by just touching him, by just your your uh, your saliva, or uh, uh, just talking in front of him. So you can easily affect everyone. So the contact tracing is the most powerful tool that we develop so that the government will be able now to cut the chain. So our goal is so we should help each other. All Filipinos, you know, should help each other so that we'll be able to to cut the uh, the uh, the transfer of the virus. And the best way to do that is to cooperate with the government. So we're, we're able also to link this to the World Health Organization. So even the real-time uh, monitoring system of what happened all over the world, so we're able to link that as well. So. Uh, well, uh, this is stay safe, and uh, you can visit that uh, uh, if you were willing also to to uh, to uh, to uh, enhance it. In fact, we receive a lot of uh, uh, calls, and uh, they're we're happy because uh, they are telling us that uh, you have to embed this, embed that. So we are revising that, uh, we are modifying it, we continuously, uh, you know, enhance everything, you know, so that uh, we can help, you know. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the stay safe that piece is. There's no cost for, for the government, so this is free. So we give it for free, and uh, what we're asking is uh, all about uh, about people helping each other. So that's our plea to the people. You know, thank you, Richard, for allowing us again to present because I think uh, uh, we we should promote the uh, digital bayanihan, and I think that's the only. It's it's a good thing because we Filipinos are really into it. So. That's it. So uh, that's the uh, stay safe. That ph, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, this will be uh, uh, used by every Filipino. Uh, let's help our country. Let's help our family. Let's help our community by joining force together. And uh, there you go. So that's it, uh, Richard. So thank you so much for uh, uh, allowing me again to uh, to present the uh, stay safe. That yes. to Asia CEO. Very good. Yeah, so try to download this. This is the kind of system that countries like Korea, Singapore, that are have been the best at dealing with the crisis have. So uh, take a look. It's easy to download. I've done it, and uh, you can take a look. Okay, our next speaker, final speaker. We're so pleased to have General Guillermo Aliazar with us. He has an interesting job because he's busy overseeing 77,000 people across the country. And I think many of them would be armed. These in, are in the PNP, the Armed Forces, the Coast Guard and, and, and other things. We see him on TV almost every day, it seems, these days. And we're so pleased to have him that he could take the time to give us some idea of the current situation, what the future might look, look like. And also, I, I got to say, uh, General, we're very pleased to be able to support the efforts of your men and women in uniform, who I know are, are working 12-hour days. So, everyone, please welcome General Guillermo Aliazar. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. First of all, I thank the Asia CEO Forum, Richard and Rebecca, our co-speakers and our sponsors for this opportunity to share with the public insights about our country's fight against COVID-19 in my capacity as the Deputy Chief for Operations of the Philippine National Police and as Commander of the Joint Task Force uh, COVID-Shield. 
when the implementation of the community quarantine in Metro Manila was approved on March 15 and was expanded two days later to include the entire Luzon under the enhanced community quarantine, uh, the national government needed a consolidated effort to strictly implement the guidelines set by the Interagency Task Force on the management of the Emerging Infectious Diseases, or IATF. It was then the Joint Task Force Coronavirus Shield, or JTF COVID Shield, was created, composed of the Philippine National Police, the Armed Force of the Philippines, the Philippine Coast Guard, as well as the Bureau of Fire Protection. Its um, three main duties are to ensure that home quarantine, social distancing rules, and other guidelines set to prevent the spread of the COVID-19 are followed. Second is to ensure that only authorized persons outside residence, or what we call APOR, are allowed to go out and make sure that non-essential travels are prevented, and lastly, to ensure unhampered movement of cargo vehicles. Based on our data, the Joint Task Force COVID Shield has almost uh, 124 personnel under its uh, disposition. Just like what you have said, Richard, we have uh, 77,113 personnel deployed, uh, 65,000 coming from the PNP and uh, 12,000 uh, uh, from the uh, Joint AFP, Philippine Coast Guard and Bureau of Fire Protection. And we have a 47,000 reserve force that could be utilized, all in all, 112,000. I think the operative board here is SHIELD. This is our share in this uh, Bayanihan effort of our country. We, especially the uh, Philippine National Police, are mandated to shield the people from the negative impact of this pandemic. So the families may still live uh, safely in their homes amid the ECQ implementation, and that the basic needs of these people are provided, at least by ensuring the impeded flow and the availability of food and other essential goods. And lastly, that all the guidelines to ensure that the coronavirus threat is contained are strictly enforced. So the biggest challenge for us actually is on the restriction of the movement of millions of people because there are a lot of families who cannot afford to stock food and other basic needs as they are dependent on their daily wages. A few of them still need to go out and work. So the government allows them in controlled manner. So what we have done so far is first, we set up more than 4,000 quarantine control points or QCPs across the country, reinforced by beat patrols of local police units to enforce curfew down to barangay level. Second, in response to President Duterte's order to ensure the unimpeded movement of cargo vehicles, the Joint Task Force COVID Shield through the PNP's High Patrol Group also establish dedicated control points or DCPs where all cargos and only cargo vehicles are inspected. So far, we have established 112 DCPs in various strategic areas in the country. Mostly, these are located in the boundaries of our provinces and the region. As a result, there have been significant improvement in the movement of cargo vehicles that supply food and other essential goods to each and every community. So we have uh, two kinds of uh, uh, checkpoints, the DCP or the 112 uh, uh, dedicated control points manned by the highway patrol groups who can only check cargo vehicles. And the rest, the other 4,000 uh, uh, quarantine control points are manned by the local police. So it is for the cargo vehicle, you can only be inspected in the dedicated or DCPs. For non-cargo vehicle, for the thousands of QCPs. So the cargo vehicles will not be subjected to unnecessary and uh, uh, as well as uh, redundant uh, checking. So third, the enforcement of the ECQ guidelines. However, does not stop at QCPs. Through the initiative of the national government, all local government units were mandated to pass their respective ordinances on curfew, which empowered the PNP to arrest violators. From March 17, when the ECQ was first implemented up to uh, April 16, uh, where yesterday, 31 uh, days, more than 122 home quarantine and curfew violators uh, were accosted across the country, while 72% of this number were just warned and 4% were fined. The remaining 24% or almost 29,000 were arrested. But we need to be very strict in the implementation of the home quarantine and send a message to the public that we are really serious in implementing them. 
That is why in coordination with our Justice Department, the electronic inquest or the online referral of cases through the use of apps with video call capabilities was launched and resulted in the immediate filing of cases against more than 6,000 violators. Uh, so we have online inquest, but we don't have online detention. That is why from the 6,000 violators, still a little over 3,000 are still uh, in jail right now. And who knows when they can uh, go out for, for bail. So for transportation-related violations, we have around 9,000 apprehensions in NCR and Luzon. And on the part of the PNP, uh, well, under our the able leadership of our uh, head, uh, PNP General Archie Gamboa, operations were almost uh, were also conducted against profiteers and hoarders, particular of medical supplies like alcohol, face masks, and others. And uh, as of yesterday, for the past uh, month, a total of 709 of them were arrested, while multi-million peso worth of face masks thermal scanners, disinfectants, and other medical supplies were also confiscated. Despite being busy enforcing the ECQ guidelines, normal law enforcement functions continue against criminal, just like what we talked about uh, Richard earlier. Believe it or not, your PNP operatives still continue to, to arrest drug pushers and uh, users and confiscate multi-million peso worth of shabu and illegal drugs, despite the threat of COVID-19. Nationwide, there was a 58% decline on index crime volume for the first month of ECQ compared with the month before that as a result of the home quarantine and continuous law enforcement uh, operation. Well, uh, the biggest reduction was recorded in Luzon with 64%, followed by Visayas with 53%, and Mindanao with uh, 48%. Uh, these index crimes actually are the eight focal, focus crimes that we are monitoring. These are crimes against persons and crimes against uh, property. For crimes against person, murder, homicide, physical injury, and rape, or for crimes against the properties, these are robbery, theft, and uh, carjacking of motorcycle and uh, uh, the four-wheel uh, vehicle. And uh, uh, in all of these uh, eight uh, focus crimes, in all the island groups, Luzon, besides Mindanao, all went down well. Uh, logically, it, it, it is uh, going down because uh, uh, we don't have practically economic activity and uh, uh, less uh, uh, people around, but uh, we have to sustain it so that uh, 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 we can prevent uh, social unrest. That's why we have to have this unimpeded flow and the uh, movement of cargo so that uh, uh, this uh, crime would, won't happen with the social uh, unrest. So as early as today, we at the Philippine National Police and a joint task force are on the lookout for adjustments to be made to better manage these kinds of global crisis in the future. The bottom line really is to keep our environment safe, orderly, and peaceful. We pray for every Filipino, our public servants led by the president, and everyone around the world. We will heal as one. And uh, we would like to thank all the frontliners in here, uh, the our uh, uh, the health workers, of course, the members of the uh, uniform service, the uh, concerned, the dedicated uh, government officials, as well as those who are a part of the uh, exempted uh, essential personnel. We really salute you, and uh, uh, you will go down history as heroes who have saved our country. And uh, for the rest of the people who are staying at home, uh, let's be patient. Remember that the uh, virus doesn't move. We move it. We stop moving, the virus dies. So sa ating po mga kababayan, manatili sa bahay para mapigil natin ang paglaganap ng virus at masagip ang maraming buhay. Thank you very much, Richard. Thank you. That is such a fantastic message and such a great speaker. The, the general is, uh, but yeah, very good message. And we got to say, we really want to support our men and women in uniform. They're working 12 hour shifts and you know how it is. Sometimes there's irate people who give them a hard time for just doing their job. And it's, so we want to be sure that, that we can support them. So please, we got our questions and answers coming up next. So please watch this and, and start posting your questions.
Okay. Well, th maybe I can start with a question first, but planning for the future, I know General and I, we were speaking about this briefly earlier on, but April 13, I don't think is going to be the end of the crisis and everything's back to normal. Uh, I, I guess it'll have to be phased in, but what, what are other people's uh, plans for phasing back to normal? I, I don't know who would like to start. Maybe General? What, what's in store for the future, do you, do you think? Well, we, we know that uh, even after April 30, it's uh, uh, no longer regular time for us. And uh, that is why even uh, beyond that, we are preparing for anything that would uh, happen. Well, uh, our president with the interagency task force and uh, through the technical work group is studying uh, what would happen after this, whether it will be extended or it will be totally uh, uh, discontinued or a modified uh, community quarantine will be done. But you know what we have experienced for the past month, we have sacrificed a lot and uh, uh, we have to really uh, have to, to, to get uh, the objective of this uh, quarantine. So I believe that uh, 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 modified, uh, there could be some uh, modification on this quarantine, but uh, we are all prepared for that. But we leave this up to the wisdom of the president and uh, the inter intelligence task force uh, to, to, to plan for this event. But just the same, our the PNP leadership through our chief, uh, General uh, Archie Gamboa, has been preparing so that uh, uh, the, the uh, PNP personnel with all our resources could uh, still uh, pursue the mandate that is, uh, has given to us. Okay. Anybody else, Jovi? What's your plans, or Eric, what, or David? What what uh, what do you guys think? Yeah, well, a lot of people actually ask that question: uh, when we're going to go back to normal? If I may share my personal opinion, I said to my people, I don't think life will ever be normal. I think this is the new normal that we're going to see. Now, however, I think it's it's very important for people to realize that. Uh, I think if you take a look at history, we've been in this situation in the past as a mankind. And, and, and I think it, it's, uh, it's incumbent upon us to see what's happening now and how we will adjust our lives uh, to the new normal. Let me give specific examples. And I think I'm sure Eric will be able to back me up on this one. For, this, we, for businesses specifically, let's say, for example, the BPO sector. I mean, the BPO sector has... Actually, when I was studying the history of uh, the BPO sector, it was actually came upon after the uh, financial crisis in 1997, right? Um, when companies in the U.S. after the crisis were actually taking a look at how they can make their their operations still work at, at a lower cost, uh, and that's when when outsourcing happened. Now, in this specific situation, from our point of view, um, I'm seeing the blurring of the lines between the office and the house. I mean, that's that's very simple to say, but that's a very big question that we not only as a telco need to figure out, but also working with industry, private sector, and the public sector. I mean, look at our kids now. They're all doing their classroom uh, work every single day online. So we're talking to the Department of Education to see how are we going to make this as a permanent fixture in the future, post ACQ, um, Eric, I don't know if you can confirm this. My personal take: all of the work from home solutions that we've delivered so far, there's still more that's coming. I think it's going to be a permanent fixture in the future. If we can have people working from their homes, um, it, that, it should be a good thing. In fact, I'll share my personal experience in PLDT. Uh, we are also espousing digital transformation within ourselves. It's quite funny because when we had the quarantine, we found ourselves approving things much faster. So we were now also trying to learn to be agile in terms of the situation that we are in. So, so if we take a positive spin on what's happening, yes, there will be challenges on how the world is going to look like after this. But I think if we work together, I think we can come out stronger and, and, and a better place. Yeah, if I, if I could, Richard, uh, Jovi is spot on. We we are still in the middle of this paradigm shift. It's not over. You know, we still have some learning to do, some adjustments to make, and 
And what we see today, it's going to change tomorrow. And until there is a vaccine in place, we are constantly going to have to be vigilant. And so to Joby's point as an industry, you've seen hundreds of thousands of employees in the BPO world alone move to work from home, where work from home was such a very small percentage of our market in this industry a month ago. You have companies uh, across uh, the Philippines who now have this as a major staple in their arsenal as a solution, if you will. What, what, what I think is positive about the work from home component, because you're right, it will carry on. But what, percent, what percentage of our workforce will be work from home uh, and so forth is yet to be defined. You, you still have privacy control challenges and things along the, those lines that we need to, to get our arms around. But, you know, it is going to be one of those things that uh, you will see indefinitely, I believe, because you're going to have to have within sites and companies around the Philippines, social distancing that's going to need to be reinforced and that's going to take place for a long period of time. So I, I think in, in some ways, this is a good thing for us. If you think about um, you know, uh, the government's push to, to put more and more of the economy into the provinces, uh, uh, secondary and tertiary uh, provinces, uh, this is going to help with that dynamic. Um, as, as we get the infrastructure in place to support work from home, both as uh, an industry and working with our partners uh, like Jody, um, we will put ourselves in a better position to take the pressure off of Metro Manila and move more and more activity uh, around the country in a healthy way. So hopefully that'll be a positive byproduct. That's very interesting. Okay, well, maybe we, we can go on with, with a, another question. Now, this one's going to be a bit more difficult, and I hope it's okay to ask, but there's we're getting calls from people, and, and we all know, General Aliazar knows, we all know that there's many people who can't afford to stockpile food and so forth. They have to work, and this not just in the Philippines, but throughout the world, of course. And the worry is for, a, a, I don't know, social disruptions, breakdowns, I don't know. Can I hope that the general can maybe talk about that? I mean, do, do we have a timeline when when you think there might be real concerns where people really are getting hungry and 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 could upset things, or or you think we're we'll be okay? Well, uh, Richard, right now during the uh, enhanced community quarantine, uh, practically it's a work stoppage, and uh, only those uh, uh, essential. Uh, establishments are working with employees uh, exempted, just like the uh, our BPO. So the, we the, part of uh, the exempted establishment is uh, uh, this uh, industry. But uh, right now, uh, since uh, uh, our people are expected to be at home, and uh, for those who are really need the support of the government, uh, the, the, uh, the, this government has allotted more than 200 billion uh, for this uh, quarantine uh, period, uh, so that all of the those uh, people that uh, uh, need to be supported with the basic uh, necessity or food could be provided uh, uh, with, and uh, uh, it has to be done during this quarantine period, and uh, that is why it will be uh, different after it will be lifted. Uh, that is why we are monitoring from time to time this. Uh, uh, crime incidents, and uh, we are seeing to it that uh, the the uh, uh, the supply of food is uh, uh, very much continuing, so that food shortage will not be experienced, and uh, that could lead to uh, uh, social unrest and probably other crimes for commission. So uh, that is a very important uh, uh, for us. So as long as uh, the government, now the national and the local government, uh, the local government units. Uh, can provide the basic need of the people. And uh, I believe that uh, we can go through with this quarantine uh, period. Anyhow, it's less than two weeks from now. And hopefully by uh, uh, that time, uh, modification must be done. And uh, probably uh, other interest industries uh, could be started to, 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 to open so that uh, our economic activity will uh, uh, restart once again. 
Very good. I know uh, uh, stay safe. I saw there is a, a button to push. I want to help because I know there's a lot of businesses and organizations that are trying to help. And many business people and individuals don't know where to go. Is that something you're, you're thinking also do, David? Yes, uh, Richard. So, you know, before I will answer your, your, your question, allow me to support the the answer of uh, General uh, Eliasar. Yes. You know, I think uh, even after the after this uh, crisis, you know, our life will never be the same. You know, business, uh, lifestyle, uh, and even the the even the, the new norm will really affect a lot of things. Okay, but but again, as as General Eliasar told us a while ago, that the, when the government is even they're doing their best, and the private will join force together. I think even the shortness of food, even this, uh, uh, like uh, the logistics and, and the other necessities of, of, of each of the individuals, I think if we will be very more creative and uh, if we could bring out that Bayanihan spirit, I think we can survive this and it can somehow bring more positivity, you know, like me, me myself, like, like jo Joby mentioned to us a while ago that uh, even we're, we're becoming more productive, to be honest. In, 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 the, in the IT, in the tech side, we're becoming more productive. You know? so even Eric, I'm sure, he's feeling that, you know? Yes. He's, becoming more, he's becoming more productive, he's, 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 he's getting more clients. Of course, on the tech industry will be like booming. But, uh, you know, the, the reason why there's technology is to make our life more easier. You know, I think if people will, will now embrace this, like, uh, like for example, in, in, in the food uh, in industry. So we, we can do online shop, online delivery. We can do online payment. We can do with the help of PLDT also, you know, uh, people can work from home now. Can We can be more creative, you know. And one of the example there, going back to your first question, is the Stay Safe, you know. You see, Stay Safe is a very simple platform, but it can affect, you know, all the surrounding because as you declare your your condition, as you tell to the government that I'm okay, I'm experiencing dry cough, I'm experiencing sore throat, I'm experiencing these uh, symptoms. Now we are now uh, uh, creating this digital bayanihan, okay, so that the other people like the LGU, the government, you know, the, the, the barangay, the frontliners will be able to still assist you, okay, to, to uh, like, like free consultation or like... Uh, uh, like uh, the government will immediately call you. You need to have to be tested with the COVID-19 uh, testing kits, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think there are negative things that will that can affect a lot of things, but there's a lot of positivity. But my point of view as a tech company is like uh, uh, it's like we need to bring out the creativity. You know, we have to, the creativity, the uh, to be agile as well, and uh, we need to also now like help. You know like the other businesses you know helping each other now is actually the best virtue that we could uh, we could bring into the table whether government or private joining force all together so that's my uh, my, my my answer uh, richard okay super well we have a lot of questions uh maybe for for businesses i mean the the bpo and it industries C can you tell us whether companies you see you, but you all mentioned that there, the the change it's not going to be the same as it is in the future. Does that mean we're going to see a, an increase in or a lower lowering usage of office space and more people working from home for the future? That's one question. And the second is for Jovi. If so, is Philippines prepared or able to to support multiple employees working from home? Do we have the infrastructure? Who who'd like to to go first? Well, I'll talk to the BPO side of it, uh, Richard. Okay. Um, you know, we, you know, the, the infrastructure is there in part. Uh, you know, I, I think we still have a way to go to to enable a a, a more material subset of our population. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, relative to, to space, I, I think that's an interesting dynamic. I think you're going to see uh, what we look for in in space and offices to evolve in a different way. Um, because you're going to still need a place to go. Uh, there's still you're not going to be able to get everybody in a work from home environment, uh, not not even close, uh, because some some customers just won't allow it, and um, you know there there are certainly some folks who won't be able to support that in their own homes. 
Uh, so we still need to provide uh, gainful employment for them uh, in an office environment. But the situation at work will change. It will evolve and how we utilize space will evolve. We have to think about safety. We have to think about uh, employees coming to work in a safe environment, being confident about that. Uh, so uh, a lot of work will go into uh, spatial uh, uh, physical distancing there. Uh, but I'll, I'll leave it up to Joby to talk about uh, infrastructure. Uh, as he and his team are well aware of the challenges and the opportunities there. One comment I do want to make, though, is I do think that uh, payless, that cashless transactions will increase materially. So I think, you know, like Gcash and PayMaya are going to, to, to become a really big component to, of how we minimize going to pay for bills physically, uh, handing out cash and worrying about uh, risk there. Uh, th those applications and that support mm -hmm. is going to be big mm -hmm. as we fight this battle against COVID. Uh, Jovi? Right. Thanks, Eric. Uh, I agree with you totally. Now, in, in terms of the infrastructure side, so um, it, it's quite interesting when we were looking at the uh, network dynamics of what's happening inside our network. There, there were a couple of things that were very interesting when it was being reported to us. Number one, the amount of traffic, the amount of internet traffic that we see in our data network uh, used to be all, we're all in the central business district, Makati, Ortigas, and then all of a sudden after the ECQ, everything shifted to the nearby residential areas. You know, so it was a good thing, at least from our point of view uh, on the PLDT's network, but we've um, expanded our network well in advance before the ECQ happened. And that has allowed us to in fact, I think we give we gave a speed boost to all of our consumers. If, I think we doubled the speeds because also we know that from an office environment, um, we, we just really need more bandwidth for us to be able to accommodate uh, a lot more of the workloads that has to be migrated from the office to the to the house. Now, and, and there are more stories like the explosion of Netflix, YouTube, but I won't go get into that right now. Um, but that being said, uh, it, it is not that easy to say that, yeah, we just need more bandwidth. It's a more complicated equation that we have to take a look at, uh, what sites you're getting into, what servers you're accessing. Uh, in fact, we, we work very closely with YouTube and uh, with Netflix so that they have what they call local caches in the country because in the past, everybody had to access that all the way to the U.S., and then go back to the Philippines for you to get to YouTube. Now we have local instances in our data centers locally. So when you type YouTube, you don't have to go to the US anymore and you just go uh, within the Philippines. So there are a lot of things that we can do um, uh, in, in order for us to be able to achieve that situation and say, yes, we can accommodate more home offices. Now that being said, I, I, I think it's very critical for us to, to take a look at the recent history. I remember when I joined PLDT and then after I went to Cebu after a couple of years, I, I even remember saying, what, we need 10 Mbps in the houses? You cannot finish 10 Mbps. And here we are at the, uh, at, uh, after a couple of years having 50 Mbps in the house to, to enjoy all of your Netflix, all of your TikTok, whatever, and still it doesn't seem to be enough. So we are now trying to take a look at certain technologies that will allow us to compress data more efficiently. It's, it's like a traffic system. You can't just expand the highways, right? That's why, you know, there are e-pass lanes, et cetera, so that we can actually take a look at how we can um, take a look at segmenting traffic better to be able to, to, uh, to enable that. I'll give you an example, banks. Um, the banking industry, when we looked at it, a lot of the workers from the banks should be able to work in the house except that there are certain regulations for example that desktop for example or laptops cannot be brought outside of the bank but there are certain technologies today like vdi so vdi is just a the layman's term is i want to give for example a computer to every household in the philippines vdi is you have a tv i'll just give you a keyboard your CPU in your computer is in the data center. That's typically even the setup of BPO work today. But is there a way for us, therefore, to bring down the cost so much lower so that even the, so that it will become inclusive, we can actually give more Philippines um, in the country. And I think that's, that's the revolution that needs to happen 
um, and, and we're we're studying that very close to on how we can bring down the cost, bring down the pricing. I, again, as I mentioned, it, it will not happen overnight, but we are now studying industries. And Eric is correct. Even payments, we have to talk about payments. How about logistics, right? Uh, Eric and I, we were delivering our work from home devices. We also could not deliver, right? We had people who were not supposed to be delivering going into our own warehouses and getting the equipment themselves and delivering it to customers themselves. We had relationship managers who sent videos. They were being hosed down uh, with all of these uh, chemicals so that they are uh, they are uh, clean before they are allowed entry to any specific offices. So that's basically the Bayanihan spirit that Dave is talking about. Uh, a lot of ideas are out there, and I think there are a lot of viable ideas. We just have to keep on pushing uh, for us to be able to enable that. Sorry for the long answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, could I ask, there's a number yeah. of qu uh, questions for General Aliazar. Um, what do you think are some of the positive takeaways of the PNP in this situation? I know when we've been stopped for uh, these roadblocks, they're always very polite, I, I got to tell you. Um, but do you have any heartwarming stories or, or, or what do you think about how your people ha have performed? Well, actually, uh, I can, uh, uh, we can see from the, our people on the ground, the, their sacrifices. And uh, uh, this is the time that uh, we are showing to the people our dedication. You see, we are very much vulnerable on this uh, virus. And uh, I, we, ke we keep on telling our personnel that, we have to be very careful because if we will have this uh, virus, it will also, uh, it, we can always have it uh, transmitted to our loved ones or our uh, family. And uh, in the different uh, checkpoints that we have, more than 4,000 of them, a lot of uh, uh, warming things have happened, just uh, the generosity of the people. Uh, you can see from the from the checkpoints, those uh, individual or group individuals giving us uh, uh, support in terms of food. While it is true that our PNP leadership is providing these things, but uh, uh, we welcome all the support that uh, are being given to us by the by the people, and uh, we are very thankful uh, for that. More than ever, we can see from uh, uh, from our uh, from our men and women in the field this uh, bayanihan but of course we have so much uh, so many pasawais uh, in uh, in the in the people that is why i can only imagine the frustration and the and disappointment of some of our personnel where they are engaging with hard headed uh, 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 violators of this quarantine but just the same we are here to continue to uh, be of service to the people just like what the president has said from the very start until the end of this uh, uh, crisis. The PNP together with the other members of the security force will be here to provide the necessary security and service to our countrymen. Very good. Yes, we'll keep up the good work. And now there's a number of questions about people asking about you personally. Like how has this changed you and your organization? Um, you know, do you feel like you've you've improved for the for the future, or, or you think it's just wore you down? I know David's working day and night, and I think a couple of days ago we had trouble even getting a coherent sentence out of him because he he was so sleepy. <laughs> but maybe David, what do you think? I know David you just hired a whole bunch of new people just before the uh, th this happened, so. So in all that tumultuous situation, how have you guys uh, worked there? Uh, we're we're now busier than ever, uh, Richard, and uh, you know that's why we uh, I, I, we even activated our uh, human resources department to hire more people, hire more programmers, hire more full stack developers because we we're saving a lot of uh, of uh, projects and inquiries because everyone is like moving into digital services nowadays. And uh, even the online service is really going big. Uh, and uh, even our e-commerce department is really uh, like, uh, like uh, they would like to expedite everything. Our e-technology, our e-business, our e-services, uh, 
even our e-government. So you see, th there's a lot of big change now that uh, before uh, it's easy to say that I, I, I will not use uh, online services because I can just go there and do it. But nowadays, everyone is like, uh, I should do it even I'm inside my home, you know. So I think uh, in, the perspective, in, in, in the perspective as a tech company, I think uh, we're not that worried on, 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 the, on the business side, but we're worried on the partnership side because now we are expecting a lot of uh, like a, a effect of this quarantine to uh, to our partners and our partners are quite suffering also on uh, on like uh, like uh, maintaining uh, people you know logistics is also one of the problem now that, that's why logistics business will be one of the booming business uh, in the next uh, couple of months you know e payment is also there you know so everyone is moving into uh, e commerce as well and uh, uh, I think on the tax side, if if we Filipinos, if we Filipinos will will uh, will 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 come back because the biggest problem in the Philippines we have shortage, we have shortage of uh, tax uh, individuals because most of them they are outside the country. So now if, uh, if 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 this skilled individuals will will come back or you know they can even work from home, you know I think uh, we could uh, we could expedite everything, especially in the digital transformation. Hmm. And, and Richard, if I could comment, uh, the, the impact that, that we have felt is as a as a as a team at IBEX has been uh, both. Um, it, it's been enormous from the standpoint that we we see this globally. This is happening across the world, uh, and so we get a chance to, in industry to see how other countries react to the same dynamic and how companies and offices around the world uh, work through this paradigm shift. And, and I have to say that you know, our, our team here has done a phenomenal job. I, I couldn't be prouder of our team uh, and the way they reacted, the way they ensured the safety of our people, uh, paying early, uh, all kinds of things to, to, to make sure that, that our employees were safe and secure. And, and that, that could be said for hundreds and hundreds of other BPOs uh, as well who, who all are all trying to do the right thing. Uh, in fact, some of, some of what we did working with the, the government in the Philippines has become the template for us in other countries as they start adopting similar measures. Uh, so it's uh, once again something to be very proud of. Uh, nonetheless, we, we remain concerned about all of our citizens and, and the challenges that they go through uh, adapting through uh, these difficult times, uh, especially in many cases without a source of income. But I, I know we will persevere. We are as well growing. We're, we're looking at bringing on new programs. And so through this and, and after ECQ, I, I anticipate our, 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 our sites here to, to be looking at new opportunities and, and uh, growing uh, uh, and continuing our growth curve uh, as we work through this. Good. If I may add, uh, Richard, uh, I think on a personal note, uh, how this has changed uh, the way I look at things. You know, there, we're, we're, our lives have been so busy and so fast paced and then uh, suddenly you're locked down in a place. And there are so many things that we take for granted in the past uh, that we have started to notice, like uh, the flower that I planted in my small garden. <laughs> this is the only time I'm, I'm seeing it again, right? But it makes you realize that, you know, there are also other important things in life that we need to really take care of, right? And, and um, I always harp back to the BPO sector with Eric because that has shown you time and again how resilient the Filipinos are. And it has always been, we've talked about it in the industry, what is the single biggest um, key success factor of the Philippines in the BPO space? It's a Tagalog word that can't, nobody can find a, a, a translation in English, and it's the word malas, malasakit. Malasakit. And the yes. U.S. has taken notice of Filipinos that, you know, we, we saw it during Yolanda, Everybody was flooded, but the BPO workers were still raring to go to the office, still smiling. In the ECQ, General Elizar, we saw in Facebook there were uh, there were police officers, military people dancing. But it shows you how resilient the Filipino is. And I think if we put that together and focus on the positive side, I think that that's really, that's really going to be the positive change that we are going to witness in the next couple of months. Well, well, Richard, if I may add, well, actually, we're talking about uh, BPO, and indeed, uh, BPO, well, our government uh, has given a premium to our BPO. In fact, with the 
the guidelines since day one that uh, the interagency task force has uh, issued, BPO is one of them, one among the industries that is, uh, has been exempted. And until right now, uh, we've been uh, told that uh, uh, for the BPO employees, they can, are still around, uh, allowed outside of the residence, you know, uh, bringing out or transferring or moving computer equipment so that they can work outside of their, the, uh, their uh, offices and they can uh, work at home. And uh, indeed, uh, you've been telling about the, the changes or, uh, that you have been experiencing, but well, for the PNP, uh, uh, well, of course, we are exempted from the quarantine, but we still, we are expected to be in the ground. So even if uh, uh, this uh, quarantine will be uh, suspended or there will be modified uh, quarantine, the, uh, the men and women of the Philippine National Police will be still on the ground, uh, will still be vulnerable on this uh, infection, but uh, just the same, uh, we'll be continuing our service to see to it that uh, other industries and uh, other sectors of the, uh, the, the community or society will, will have uh, its own uh, revival after this uh, enhanced community quarantine. Very good. Well, maybe we could end off with some motivational um, stories. Anybody have any any stories of your employees or people you know who've really contributed and, and sacrificed for, for others? Who's uh, Who's got some stories there? Oh, Richard, I think we, we all have. I'm, you know, I, talking offline about this earlier, they're so numerous. Uh, we have, um, you know, I think about our, our employees and what they're enduring, whether they're deciding to stay at home and not work or whether they're working from home or whether they're working in hotels. You know, many of them have children and parents and others to take care of, and that dynamic changes. Um, th their ability to now have to work in a more complicated environment with perceived risk or, or real or otherwise uh, is very stressful. Uh, and so their family lives have changed in a very material way, whether they're working or not, whether they're at home or in a hotel. Um, and many of them have come to the aid of others, despite the fact that they have issues and challenges of their own. Um, numerous uh, giving campaigns that, that we've started as a, as C, on the CCAP and IBPAP and within IBEX and elsewhere. Um, the, the propensity to give as a culture is amazing. Uh, and we see that time and time again. And, and I, I couldn't be prouder to, to be sitting there as part of that. So um, yeah, we, we've got a lot of great examples going around, Richard. Uh, and it's, uh, it's wonderful to see. Very good. Anyone else? Yeah, definitely. Uh, thousands of stories out there. I'd just like to take this opportunity, Richard, to again thank the men and women of the PLDT group, EPLDT, and so many other companies, Kuro Technica, who are on lockdown, work from home, or are still in the field, or are still working in the office. Uh, again, thank you so much, even to my neighbors. Thank you so much. You see, even the Bayanihan spirit there, we just gave out. Uh, some of our funds, we pulled them together and we started to help the neighboring uh, um, uh, families uh, near our, our villages. So, so the, the spirit is happening everywhere and that, that keeps uh, the, the positive spirit alive in me. And I hope uh, that everybody remains positive and we will get through this. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you too. David, do you have anything else? Yeah. I know you done so much yes, for thank your you so much uh, for arranging this Richard you know uh, I think uh, we can do this together we can we can get through this I would like also to thank uh, all the frontliners out there you know uh, really doing their best to to help the the, the PNP uh, the effort of, uh, of the group of general LSR I know how hard it is you know to to be there you know you are you are now actually uh, risking your lives, you know, because you are in the streets, you know, making us all secured, uh, maintaining the peace and, and order right there. So uh, I, I think uh, you guys are the real heroes, you know, uh, and, and us uh, working from home, uh, we need to cooperate. Uh, we're asking everyone to, to follow the instruction of the government, you know, 
And stay safe is one of the tools that you could do so that uh, we can help the government report our condition so that we'll be able to so that the government will be able to target the areas you know to uh, to uh, to maintain to to do testing you know including the contact tracing uh, and uh, uh, trace and uh, trace and the respond of the LGU. So thank you, Richard, the PLDT group. Uh, uh, thank you so much for allowing uh, Stay Safe to, uh, to be freely accessed on your uh, on your uh, uh, domain. So uh, thank you so much, Richard, for arranging this. Thank you so much. I just thank like you. to echo Dave. I just like to echo Dave, General Elizar. Thank you so much to you and to your men and women out there in the field. Saludo kami sa Thank you. Yes, and for the general, maybe we could have the general make the uh, closing remarks. But I got to say, yesterday, uh, when we had a, a dry run, uh, the, the general had to leave a little bit earlier. But but we all talked about the work that the general and, and PNP is, is doing, and we're all very impressed. And I should say, as a professional, this is the first time we've worked with the general. But you see, he took the time to put a, a beautiful background behind him with, with the flag. He's immaculately dressed. He's just a fantastic example for all of us of professionalism. And Filipinos should all feel proud that we've got people like this, you know, in, in senior positions. So please, uh, I hope <laughs> it, we're sincere. I'm not just saying that to be nice, but it's true. Uh, so maybe, General, if, if you could close us with, with some uh, heartwarming uh, remarks, we'd appreciate it. Thank you, Richard. Like the rest of the government, the world, that include the United States and other developed countries in Europe, we are now also suffering from the brunt of the speed of the inspection rate and the magnitude of the economic and the public health impact of the coronavirus. I always maintain that a lot of countries uh, made their own plans against COVID-19 since we saw what it did in Wuhan City. But the fact that it turned into a global pandemic in a short period of time well, clearly gives us an idea on the kind of formidable enemy we are dealing with. But our president, President Rodrigo Duterte and his crisis managers are doing everything that could do to cushion the impact of COVID-19, especially to the health and well-being of every Filipino. So we may not have enough resources to immediately provide everything that is needed to win this battle, but the dedication, the passion to serve, and the willingness to sacrifice, especially by our health workers and other people in the front line, are what keeping us to actually hold the line and gradually advance to contain the spread of the disease. The fact that our president boldly stated that he's willing to sell government properties to ensure that no Filipino would die of hunger as a result of the strict home quarantine implementation is but another proof that we are on the right track in defeating COVID-19. On the part of your police force, headed by our chief PNP, General Archie Gamboa, and the Joint Task Force COVID Shield under me, we would like to assure the Filipino people and the rest of the world that we are doing everything that we could as among the frontliners in this war to help contain the virus. We have already lost several frontliners from the health sector and three of our police frontliners. And we believe that the best way to honor their ultimate sacrifice is to make sure that their death would not be in vain by saving us, many Filipinos, from coronavirus infection. Maraming salamat po at magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Thank you very much, General. And he made a, an excellent point I know we have friends who are medical workers and the sacrifices and danger they are taking on a daily basis is remarkable. And as we see in the news, there's so many doctors and, and other people dying. So, so it's a really a crisis situation in there. So if we can all support them everywhere we can. And we really appreciate everyone being here. David, Eric, Jovi, General Eliazar, that was a fantastic session. We didn't know what to expect because it was our first one, but we really enjoyed it. And a, a lot of good pom uh, comments I'm already seeing. So Jovi and his marketing people also were, were key in helping us. So really nice. We'll see you again. Look forward to seeing you in person, giving you a hug and everybody else too. So please uh, stay safe.
both download it and be safe. And uh, we'll see everybody in the near future. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Richard. Marami salamat po.